your hotel sounds fabulous. I am, like what you mentioned, I am one of those persons that has not been to Sacramento. So guess what? I got to put Sacramento on my bucket list so I can stop through and I can say hello to you over at your hotel the next time I'm out. (laughs) Yeah, you have to. It is a beautiful city. It really is. Hi, this is Ted Kelly with another Ted's Hospitality Minute. And today we've got an awesome guest on. Her name is Shelly Morinville. She is the hotel GM for the Sacramento Residence Inn downtown. It's an exquisite, I hear, very nice place to visit if you're ever in Sacramento. And she's going to come on and chat with us a little bit about what's going on out in Cali. Hey, Shelly, how are you? I'm very good. Thank you. Well, good, good, good. Thanks for giving us a few minutes of your time today. You know, usually before we talk about the topic at hand, I always love to hear a little bit about the guests and why and how they ended up in the hospitality space. Do you have the quick and dirty version for us? (laughs) Yeah, I mean, I needed two jobs and trying to support myself as a young uh, teenager that left her house literally at 18 years old and I started working uh, at a courtyard by Marriott right here in Northern California, and I fell in love with it. Like, I couldn't get enough of it. And then um, I found myself hitting these barriers along the way, kept hitting a roadblock. You're too young. You're not old enough, you know, not old enough, all these different things. And I just kept pushing forward. And um, I was a, took my first general manager position at the age of 30. And I've opened several hotels, uh, built a restaurant, and here I am leading and teaching and inspiring people to be the best that they can be. Wow, that is awesome. And that's a nice story because what we find through many of the guests that we talk to on the THM, what we find is that, you know, hospitality wasn't exactly on the radar for them. You know, it was it was through a series of turns, you know, lefts and rights, ups and downs, right, that they ended up in the hospitality space. But it was like once they got there, they absolutely loved it. Yeah. And well, I think that's true for anybody. Right. When we bring somebody into this industry for the very first time, we tell them right off the bat, you are either going to love this (laughs) or you are going to hate it. Right. And there's no in between for hospitality. And there's certainly those people that try to walk away from it, but they will always inevitably come back. Oh, man. Nice, nice, nice. So tell me this. So tell me, what's a day in the life for you at the residence in in Sacramento downtown? You know, I mean, it's it's teaching. It's um, like I said, it's inspiring. It's welcoming people into a city where they maybe are not familiar, where they're scared, uncomfortable, alone. Um, maybe, you know, I work in a, a residence in is more of a long term hotel. So we often will deal with families who've been displaced due to fire and flood. And so, you know, my day can be all paperwork. It can be all emails. And then there are some days when it's just simply all people. And so it's exciting. I love to tell people, you know, I am ultimately caught in that rat race, getting up and going to work every single day and coming home and going to the same job every day. But no two days are ever alike. So. And it sounds like you've got a very nice hotel there. It's like it's fairly large, a few hundred rooms. you got some private residences there as well. Can you talk a little bit about your property? Yeah, so we are 235 all-suite hotel. So we have um, 30 condominiums, which are on the upper three floors of the building. And prior to COVID, we had a bar and restaurant. And since COVID, we have outsourced that. So we still have the bar and restaurant, but we no longer manage it. We just collect rent, which is, <laughs> which is a nice change. <laughs> Um, especially, you know, with all the challenges for restaurants in Sacramento, it's been nice to not have to worry about that a little bit, but it is a beautiful property recently renovated just two years ago with an urban feel. So it's not your typical residence in you actually walk in and feel like you're more in a full service hotel than you are a residence in. Wow. And it sounds like you're in a great location. From looking at some of your reviews, people absolutely love the location for your hotel. 
Yeah, we're number two on TripAdvisor. I'm working very hard to become number one, but we are located a uh, kitty corner from the state capitol. Um, and in a beautiful, the I can see the rose garden from outside the window. So it is beautiful in Sacramento. Yeah. And you mentioned COVID and you talk about the operation of the restaurant. Now, are you seeing or are you feeling that post COVID, the urban areas in terms of the occupancy level and the activity, is it picking back up to pre COVID or how are you guys, how would you kind of assess where you guys are right now? You know, Sacramento's in a unique situation. Um, we, our convention center was closed during COVID. So it was actually a blessing. We didn't lose this enormous amount of business that we were anticipating, right? Because that convention center didn't have any conventions booked. Um, conventions are back. People are, I think, traveling because they were tired of staying home. But the dynamics of the city are different. You don't have the state worker downtown um, because they're not required to be in the office yet. We've heard that they are going to be required to come back eventually. But, you know, I, I don't think it hurts a hotel. Um, people are dying to get out and they're trying to be with others. I think that it's more those small restaurants that have really suffered because you don't have that foot traffic downtown from those state workers wanting to go grab lunch or hit happy hour before they go home. So it's, Definitely Sacramento has, I think, come back faster than most. Yeah. And you guys dealing with, and I don't know how you feel about a lot of the hotels, uh, guys that we've spoken with, seems like from an operation standpoint, it seems like they're always dealing with a shortage of labor. Are you guys finding that same kind of scenario or what are you seeing? Um, you know, we changed our business model. So we were really that convention hotel a lot of ins and outs. We could really never convince uh, ownership or management that a residence in really that long-term traveler is going to be your saving grace. And it wasn't until COVID that the business model shifted organically and we didn't have a choice. So now all of a sudden we were going after this long-term business and it created this this base, this base of business that we hadn't had before. And so we have not brought the same number of people back because we don't require them anymore. We aren't doing a hundred in and a hundred out. We're doing maybe 70 in and 50 out because we have this base of people now that are not, they're not checking in and out. They're just staying here. These are their apartments while they're away from home. And it's made business a little bit different. I am actually fully staffed. Um, for the new business model, which has been great, but we have had to change how we, how we manage staff. I think that's the big thing, right? Is that, um, it's not like it used to be. It's not cut and dry. It's not, it, it's a much different dynamic of managing people today than it was pre COVID. Oh, that is so cool because that's unique from, from very, as many of the guys that we've chatted with, they're still having their challenges with the, operational side of labor and finding people that can actually fill the voids in terms of having people that can come in and turn the rooms for them. Uh, it's a, it's a big challenge for a lot of other folks that we've spoken with, you know, so it's, I'm glad to hear that, uh, you've, you've changed your model to the point that it actually fits the business as opposed to trying to make the, uh, the business kind of work with what you used to have it. Right. So interesting. Interesting. Quite interesting. Hey, Shelly, let me let me uh, give a shout out to my sponsors or they won't let me do the THM anymore. And then I won't be able to talk to great people like you. Uh, THM viewers, this episode is being sponsored by Recover It. If you've experienced a home fire, tornado or other natural disaster, you know how easy it is to lose everything overnight. Well, Recover It is a new app. It allows you to record everything in your home, store it in the cloud for easy retrieval should disaster strike. Versus you trying to recall all of your household valuables, your heirlooms, your jewelry to settle your claims with your insurance company. Basically, you can settle your claims a lot faster with your insurance company by having the Recover It app and all of your stuff in inventory. Check out the Recover It app today. Use the promo code on screen and get 50% off. And as always, we ask all of our viewers, follow us here on LinkedIn, subscribe to our YouTube channel. This episode with Shelly will also be on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. And as always, we always appreciate your thoughts and feedback 
on every episode. So Shelly, tell me this. What's uh, what does Sacramento typically have in the summer months? Are there upcoming events that are just must, you know, you got to be there. You got to see this type of event in Sacramento or what's going on? We know, you know, you guys got a nice basketball team that came, came through when you went to the playoffs. We know that you got that momentum going, right? What else do you guys have? Yeah, well, we have our Friday night concert in the parks. Um, we have our, um, our farmer's markets, which are great because you know that all of our fruits and vegetables are sourced right here in Sacramento, being the farm to fork capital of America. Um, and then, you know, we've got aftershock is coming up in October. You got to get out and see a, there's nothing like watching an Ironman race, right? So we have Ironman coming also in October. Golden Sky is our country Western festival. Um, and you know, I, when people who've never been to Sacramento come here, it is so family friendly and there are so many great things to do. We have two rivers that come together. So you can either see where that happens here by Discovery Park or you can head up to the Auburn area and see at the confluence where the rivers come together. But it's it's be- beautiful countryside. And um, and then the, the number of lakes that are right within driving distance. So there's lots to do here. Wow. Let me ask this question real quick. From a sustainability standpoint, you know, we know how we know how serious California is about being green and clean energy and water and all of that good stuff. How is that impacting you at the hotel? Are you guys putting in a lot of, you know, new nuances to help kind of save on the water, save on the paper, try to, you know, environmentally friendly stuff? How's that impacting you? Yeah, I mean, we are always looking at new ways um, to be efficient. We are looking at, at converting, as many people have done, the water fountains into water bottle stations. Um, we don't use anything. All of our paper products are um, combustible. They break down biodegradable very quickly. We do have the recycling bins in all of the guest rooms. Um, we just signed up with a new program, um, called Golden Key, which, or Green Key, um, which is a really neat program because it actually allows you to dig into your building and figure out, are there other things that could, you could be doing? Can you put bees on your roof? Um, can you put a garden out by the pool? Um, what are other things that you can help to support? So we're really kind of just digging into some of that. Um, California's instituted food waste programs. So there's also those programs that we participate in as well. So, yeah, it, it's, uh, you know, from all of the work that we've done in California, which we're in the kind of the, the owner's rep project management, you know, pit renovations, major maintenance cafe type project, California has always kind of had the most stringent guidelines on things that you can do and you can't do when it comes to energy, you know, conservation of this, all of that. And nothing wrong with it. I just know that they should be, I got to think, leading the charge in terms of all of the the latest and greatest things that you can do to, you know, protect the environment and uh, sustain, you know, keep everything nice and clean. Yeah, I mean, we got rid of the mini um, shampoos and conditioners probably five years ago. Um, and it just is starting to roll its way across the U.S. So, you know, California is the first step for everything. And that's not always a bad thing. I know that the rest of the country looks at us and thinks that we're crazy and we make a lot of extra work for others, but not all of it is bad. We have to, we have to be honest. It's some of it's pretty good for not only the environment, but for people. So, yeah, that is awesome. But I think, I think it's the right move. And I think it's, you know, a good thing to do, particularly if you can figure out a smart way to do it. Right. So that's kind of been my my take on the, the sustainability move. And, you know, it, it all makes sense if you can make it work for your for your business model. Right. Right. Yeah. So, Shelly, I want to thank you for giving us some time this morning to talk about your hotel sounds fabulous. I am like what you mentioned. I am one of those persons that has not been to Sacramento. 
So guess what? I got to put Sacramento on my bucket list so I can stop through and I can say hello to you over at your hotel the next time I'm out. <laughs> yeah, you have to. It is a beautiful city. It really is. And if you haven't been here, you know, we have more trees per capita than any. Well, at least I don't want to get the facts wrong. But at one point, we had more trees per capita than any other city in the U.S. So, I mean, it's a beautiful city. It really is. Right. Wow. Well, we will definitely have to keep it on our bucket list and get out and try to visit you and uh, check out the, the residence in in downtown Sacramento. All right. Awesome. Thank hey, you for having me. Hey, awesome. Thank you for giving us the time. This has been another Ted's Hospitality Minute. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Check us out on LinkedIn. And as always, this podcast with Shelly will be on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. And we love your feedback. And I'm sure Shelly loves to hear your feedback, too. This has been another Ted's Hospitality Minute. We'll see you guys next time. Have a great week. Ted's Hospitality Minute is sponsored by Recover It. Don't wait for disaster to happen to wish you had done this.